Hello students and welcome to the third and final lecture video in chapter 10 which is about World War I. We're starting off today talking about the 14 points. We left off the last time talking about the end of World War I and if you would take this time to pause the video and look at page 310 in the yellow textbook. The 14 points was President Wilson's plan for peace after the war and it included many provisions. One of the most famous was a call for a League of Nations. The League of Nations would have been a worldwide peacekeeping organization, much like the United Nations we have today. We did not have any such form of uh, government or system in place at this time, um, and this would have been a first. However, uh, the Treaty of Versailles, which ended World War I, was not ratified by the United States Senate. In the United States, the President can enter a treaty, but the Senate has to ratify it or approve it. The Senate did not ratify it, so therefore the U.S. never entered into the League of Nations, and without the help of the U.S., it failed, even though our president is the one that created it. So the Treaty of Versailles ended World War I in 1919 and was very, very harsh on Germany. One of the provisions in it was the War Guilt Clause, and it basically blamed Germany for starting the whole war, and it was very, very hard on Germany. One thing it did was make them pay reparations. Now, reparations are payments for war damages. So Germany, just a few years ago, finished making their last payments to the United States under this treaty. So that's how long and that's how much money they had to pay back. And it completely destroyed their economy. The Treaty of Versailles, again, included the League of Nations, but was rejected by the U.S. Senate because uh, a couple of reasons. Number one, President Wilson, which was a Democrat, did not invite any Republicans to go negotiate the treaty. And Republicans controlled the Senate. So as payback, they didn't ratify the treaty. Also, they wanted to remain isolationist since the war was over and stay out of all uh, foreign entanglements and foreign affairs. The leader of the Senate at this time was a man named Henry Cabot Lodge, which was the, again, he was a Republican. And because Wilson would not compromise, he made sure that the Senate rejected the treaty and we did not ratify the Treaty of Versailles and did not join the League of Nations. And of course, without U.S. participation, without our money, our power, our influence, the League of Nations failed. So what were the effects of World War I? Well, number one, there was a lot of inflation in this country. Inflation means rising prices. So prices were going up at a very uh, rapid rate, and this was caused by demand. There was a lot of people uh, coming home from the war and people in other countries demanding a lot of goods and products, and that caused prices to, to raise. We became the largest and best economy because the economies and countries of Europe were completely destroyed by about five years of massive warfare. Also, we had labor strikes. A lot of workers in the country felt like that they weren't getting their fair share, their wages weren't high enough, so there was a period of unrest uh, with the labor movement, a lot of unions going on strike. And then the women and the blacks that had moved north and had filled the factory jobs were no longer needed, so they left the factories and the soldiers that came home from the war filled those factory jobs again. Uh, now, going on to political effects, we had the Red Scare. Now, this is very, very important because we're going to be talking about this a couple more times this year. A, the Red Scare was a widespread fear of communism. There was a big fear in this country that there, the Communist Party was trying to take over. And in fact, there was a large Communist Party in the United States at this time. And it uh, led to a lot of paranoia and a lot of hysteria and a lot of people suspecting that you know just about everyone was a communist. That's why it's known as the Red Scare. One example of this is the Sacco and Vanzetti uh, incident. Sacco and Vanzetti were Italian immigrants, and they were executed during this time for a crime that they probably did not commit. But they were suspected of being communist, and they were anarchists. And so this was kind of an example of a witch hunt happening, every, you know, looking, every, looking at everyone and thinking everyone was a com communist and you know, perse persecuting anyone that they thought was a communist. Sacco and Vanzetti were probably innocent of this crime, yet they were executed anyway because of all the hysteria and because of the Red Scare. In 1920, Warren G. Harding was elected president. This was a rejection of President Wilson and the way he had handled the war and its aftermath and of the Democrats because Warren G. Harding was a Republican. Social effects. Americans desire to return to normalcy, which is an ideal vision of American life before World War I. Americans des desired to return to, to a time when we were isolationists, we weren't fighting wars in European countries, and everything was back to the quote-unquote good old days. Now, the word normalcy, by the way, was not a word until it was invented by Warren G. Harding when he was campaigning for president in 1920. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.